So now in this video, we're going to take a look at the same molecule here. So when we have a molecule and we put it in an NMR and we get a signal like this, could you tell me what the splitting pattern is? Is it a triplet quartet? What is it? Okay. But that, but this right here on the right, we see that it is two triplets. Believe it or not, these are the same exact molecule. Well, what's the difference? Well, this one on the left, this one right here, was done, let's say, in a 90 megahertz NMR. And this one on the right is going to be, let's say, a 300 megahertz NMR. So getting a more powerful magnet, paying the extra money, is going to offer us better resolution. You can't really tell what the splitting pattern is there, but with a higher resolution or a stronger magnet, we can see that the those two signals are two triplets. It's not just one signal that's really, really messy. So it's really cool and convenient. One thing is consistent between the two NMR instruments, and that is the distance shown here. See that distance between those two peaks? That distance right there is going to be the exact same if it's in the 90 megahertz instrument or the 300 megahertz instrument. Now that gap right there, you can see is labeled with the letter J. And the sub one is referring to the protons. So proton one or proton two, that's what it's looking at. But the J stands for something called the J coupling constant. And the J coupling constant is simply the distance between those peaks. Now this J coupling constant is going to prove useful and I'm going to show you why it's useful. But the main point of this slide is that it does not matter what instruments you use, the J coupling will always be the same. So if we look at an example here, and this is going to show us a, an NMR of this benzene derivative. And this is going to help us understand why J coupling constants are so very important. Okay. So if I take a look at protons D, okay, we would predict protons D to split into a triplet. And that's exactly what we see on the NMR, a beautiful triplet. And then if we look at C, we would predict that to split into a beautiful quartet as shown there. So let's put, write that down. D is going to be a triplet. C is going to be a quartet. That's what we would predict. Now what's so cool about the J coupling constants is that you hear the word coupling, right? So if protons are coupling, so what's, when we look at these two protons here, or two sets of protons, C and D protons are coupled to one another. And so look at the J constant, 7.6, 7.6. So when you're looking at NMR signals and then you find the J couplings, every, if you have values that have the exact same J coupling constant, then that means they're coupled to one another. So we can look at this NMR right here and say, hey, since those two signals have the same J coupling, then that must mean that the two protons or the two groups of protons are next to each other. And that's what we see right here. Right. But if we made if if we ask the question is C and B next to each other, are they coupled to one another? you would be like, well, let's look at the J coupling constants. B has a J coupling constant of 8.5 versus 7.6. They're not the same J coupling constant. 
So they're not coupled to one another. And it helps us to figure that out. Isn't that pretty slick? So that's what J couplings are used for. So I want to show you another example of why J coupling constants is so important. Okay. So one cool feature about J couplings is that when we look at these molecules on the screen here, we can use J coupling values to help us distinguish the difference between them. So for example, how can you tell the difference between this molecule here and this molecule there? When you place those two molecules in an NMR, get a spectrum for each of them, they're going to be very, very similar. You won't really be able to distinguish them just by looking at the splitting patterns. What you're going to have to be able to do is look at the J coupling. So what we have here is HA is going to couple with HB, right? And that's going to give us a J coupling constant, right? Whatever that is. But when you look at HA, on this molecule on the top right, you see that it's going to couple with HB and give us a J coupling constant. What is it? Well, let me be more precise there. I'm asking the J coupling for A. Okay. What is the J coupling of A? Now, how can you distinguish the difference between these two? This is so cool, guys. If we go to this table right here, look at this guy and that guy. So what we have here is wet on an alkene. If the protons are on the same side, that's called cis. And if they're on opposite sides, we call that trans. And if the hydrogens are on the same carbon, we call that geminal. But look what's interesting. If it's cis, trans, geminal, they all have different J coupling constants. So when we go and look at these two molecules right here, between these two, how can we tell which one we have? By looking at the J coupling constant. If we have a J coupling constant of 13 to 18 hertz, then what do we have? It's going to be this molecule right here because the protons are trans. But if we had a J coupling constant of 7 to 12, which molecule would we have? It would be this one because those protons are cis to one another. Isn't that so cool? So it's really good for you guys to memorize this, that the trans has a larger J coupling constant than cis and geminal. It goes in that order. That would be very, very good for you guys to just have that memorized. Okay. Okay, so that will be, that's the end for this video. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, please let me know.